चार्ज ट्रांसफर ट्रांजिशन और चार्ज ट्रांसफर स्पेक्ट्रा इज अ वेरी क्रूशल टॉपिक विच कम्स अंडर कॉर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री एंड दैट इज वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू फोकस ऑन टूडे Hi everyone and welcome to the channel my name is Sonal and today our topic of discussion is going to be charge transfer transitions let us first understand the definition of charge transfer transition charge transfer transitions are the ones where in an electron is either transferred from a ligand orbital to a metal orbital or from a metal orbital to a ligand orbital these type of transitions are known as charge transfer transitions so what did i say if an electron is transferred from the ligand orbital to the metal orbital or from the metal to the ligand orbital right so if an electron is transferred in this particular arrangement then these transitions are known as charge transfer transitions okay second point to note is that the energy which is associated with these transitions the electrons are being moved right from one level to another level that means some energy will be associated with these transitions the energy which is associated with the charge transfer transitions when it falls in the visible region when it falls in the visible region what will happen the compounds which show these charge transfer transitions will be brightly colored will be brightly colored okay so our visible region is usually from 400 to 800 nanometers right 400 to 800 nanometers so under charge transfer transitions we saw two points first of all the definition definition is when an electron when an electron is transferred from the ligand orbital to the metal orbital or from the metal orbital to the ligand orbital these transitions are known as charge transfer transitions okay second point the energy which is associated with these transitions when it falls in the visible region the compounds which are showing charge transfer transitions will be brightly colored okay so since we looked at two processes it is logically understood that under charge transfer transitions mainly we are going to focus on two processes first transition which we'll talk about ligand to metal charge transfer transition second transition will be metal to ligand charge transfer transition so now let us look at these two transitions in detail so first we are going to focus on lmct okay lmct means ligand to metal charge transfer transitions okay lmct ligand to metal charge transfer transitions okay now whenever you are studying these transitions for every transition to occur there are a set of requirements okay once these requirements are fulfilled accordingly then you can assign which charge transfer transition is taking place yeah so as a student of chemistry you all by now you all should have basic knowledge of coordination chemistry right so we have different metals we have different ligands and so many combinations of these metals and ligands are possible so which particular complex will show lmct yeah which particular complex will show us uh, charge transfer transitions dd transitions okay so in order to narrow this down there are a few requirements okay so under your lmct that is ligand to metal charge transfer transitions there are a few requirements if these requirements are fulfilled then accordingly you can categorize your complexes under lmct okay so let us go through the requirements first with respect to the metal okay which type of metal will participate in lmct okay with respect to a metal you need to have a particular metal which shows high oxidation state this is the first requirement with respect to the metal okay a metal needs to show a very high oxidation state in order to participate in lmct okay this is something that i wouldn't recommend you all to buy hard okay because i will give you a logical justification with respect to all the requirements which i'm going to put over here so first let me just write down the requirements and then i will tell you logically how you can remember it rather than sitting and buy harding all of these things okay first point your metal has to show high oxidation state also the metal should be easily reduced okay easily reduced meaning what is reduction what is the standard definition of reduction gain of electrons so the metal should be able to easily gain electrons that these are the two requirements with respect to your metal now let us look at the requirements with respect to the ligand first requirement the ligand should 
have high energy orbitals. First requirement, the ligand should have high energy orbitals and the second requirement is that the ligand should have low electron affinity. Okay, low electron affinity, fine. So these are all the requirements that we have to remember in order to have uh, a particular complex uh, show us LMCT. Okay, now I'll give you the logical explanation in order to remember these, fine. Now see, what did we say? In charge transfer transitions, the electron over here in your LMCT, the electron is going to move from ligand to metal. Okay, so here your metal is accepting electrons. So if the metal is accepting electron, it should get easily reduced, right? The ease with which your metal is accepting electron, that will play an important role in these transitions. That's why we said that the metal should be easily reduced. That means it should easily gain electrons without any resistance. Okay, this is the first thing to remember. Next, shows high oxidation state. High oxidation state meaning your transition metals like plus 6, plus 5 or uh, plus 4 also. When a metal is showing high oxidation state, that means it is having vacant orbitals. Yeah, logically you can understand that if the metal has to accept electrons, it requires vacant orbitals. Otherwise, where will it put the electrons, right? That's why we say that a major requirement of the metal should be that the metal shows high oxidation state. High oxidation state meaning the metal is having vacant orbitals. It is having sufficient space in order to easily accept electrons from the ligands, okay? So I hope these two points are clear. Come to the ligand section, the requirement for ligand. Low electron affinity. Electron affinity is liking. Right now, over here, since the ligand is donating the metal, the ligand should not really hold on to those electrons tightly. The ligand should be having low electron affinity. That means if, if it's not liking those electrons that much, uh, the ligand can easily donate those electrons. That's why we said that low electron affinity. Low electron affinity or you can also say low electronegativity. Okay, because elements which have high electronegativity, they tend to hold on to electrons tightly. Okay, whereas the ones which have low electronegativity, they tend to hold electrons loosely or they can donate them easily. Yeah, so low electron affinity is the ligand should be able to easily give off its electrons to the metal. Okay, and this particular point should have high energy orbitals. For this, I'm going to show you all a figure and using that, I will explain you all the point. So in order to understand this particular requirement of the ligand, we will require the energy level diagram, okay? So since we're talking of uh, electronic transitions, uh, we have to talk about electronic transitions in terms of energy level diagram, okay? So when we consider the ligand, the energy levels of the ligand, they're going to split, right? So over here, we have sigma, then we have pi, then we have n, which is your non-bonding orbital, uh, whereas pi and sigma are the bonding orbitals, okay? And then the higher level uh, or the high energy orbitals, we have pi star and sigma star. These are your anti-bonding orbitals, okay? And then you also have metal. Metal is going to split into Eg and D2G, fine? Since here the movement of electron is taking place from the ligand to the metal, what did we say? The ligand should have high energy orbitals, okay? High energy orbitals, we're talking about two orbitals over here, either pi orbitals or n, which is your non-bonding orbitals, okay? So this is also very easy to understand. The fact over here that we are focusing on is whenever this pi, okay, bonding pi orbital and non-bonding orbital, if at all they are high in energy, that means they will be closer to the metal orbitals. So suppose there is an electron which we want to transfer from the non-bonding orbital to P2G orbital, okay. If at all this is high in energy, that means the distance between the metal and ligand orbital is going to decrease. So that means it is easier for the electron to jump or the electron may jump from the pi orbital, right. So higher the energy, easier will be uh, for the electron in order to move to the metal orbital, okay? So these are the requirements that we have to know in order to assign your uh, LMCT uh, transitions in any given complex, okay? Now let us look at some examples. Two very crucial examples of your LMCT are uh, MnO4- and CrO4-, okay? MnO4- minus, if you just have a look at this, uh, manganese over here is going to be in the plus 7 oxidation state. If manganese is present in the plus 7 oxidation state, uh, that means it is a D0 complex, okay? Plus 7 as in it has lost all of its valence electrons, so it is going to be a D0 complex, right? So obviously DD transitions in this particular case are not going to be possible. But we do know that KmO4, potassium permanganate is a deep 
purple colored uh, complex, right? So if DD transitions are not there, from where is the color coming? The color actually comes from your LMCT. Okay, that is your ligand to metal charge transfer transitions. Okay, so over here, what is happening? What was the requirement of the metal? The metal should be present in highest oxidation state, right? So manganese over here is losing all of its electrons and it has a plus 7 oxidation state. So in this case, even though oxygen is electronegative, but still uh, your LMCT is occurring because the metal is present in its highest oxidation state. Okay, similarly in the second example, CrO4 2 minus, here you have chromium in in plus 6 oxidation state, right? Chromium in plus 6 is also D0 system, okay? Here also the color of the complex or the color of the compound is because of your LMCT, right? Other than that, elements like sulfur, selenium, uh, bromine, iodine, when they act as ligands in different uh, compounds or in different complexes, they too participate in transferring their electrons uh, from themselves to the metal, okay? Some more examples of naturally occurring pigments which are brightly colored, I have listed them uh, over here. Now the reference for all of this particular material uh, directly you can take it from James E. Hui book, okay? Inorganic Chemistry by James E. Hui, fine? And I'm sure some of these questions have directly come also in a few of the CSIR uh, net examinations previously held, okay? When in uh, examples are given and you know you're asked to pick which type of uh, transitions are seen, okay? So here are some of the examples you have came Cadmium yellow, okay, uh, vermilion, then you have Naples yellow and massicot, okay, and these are the transitions which take place. So, in most of the cases, uh, it's going to be from ligand pi p orbital to the metal, okay, the metal orbital, fine. In the case of cadmium, it is going to be 5s, in the case of mercury, it is going to be 6s, fine. The reference for this particular data I've already mentioned to you is it's uh, James E. Hui book, okay. So, these are some more examples uh, which directly show your metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. Another Another type of question uh, which we face in LMCT is a set of complexes are given and uh, the question says that uh, you're supposed to arrange them in increasing order of energy uh, which is required for the transition to take place, okay? For example, we can take these uh, mercury complexes, arrange in energy order of LMCT. Okay, so over here again we can make use of energy level diagram. You can consider this to be the energy level of your metal. Okay, after that you will have chlorine over here. Okay, then you will have bromine over here. Okay, and then you will have iodine over here. Okay, so the transition is going to take place like this from the ligand to the metal. Right? So you can see that uh, your complex with iodine is the transition over here is happening at lowest energy. Right? So the trend in terms of energy will be highest for chlorine. Okay, This is highest energy. Right? This is the highest energy followed by bromine followed by iodine. Okay, and this data is accurate with respect to the color of these complexes or these compounds as well. Uh, the first one is actually a white colored compound. Bromine will be yellow and iodine will be red. 